Hey guys, and welcome back to my second Roblox scripting tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at some basic programming concepts inside Roblox, how to use loops, how to make variables, that kind of thing. So the first thing we want to do is add a script. So we're running it on the server, there's no fancy code going on. Uh, so we're just going to go inside server script service here, type in script, and we're going to add in a script here. So as you see, you start a script and it comes up with print hello world. And that's a great demonstration of what print does. When something prints, it's just going to add it into the output. So you can see here we've got hello world as the output whenever we play the game. That's useful for debugging or displaying different messages depending on what the script's doing. Uh, next, we'll learn how to comment out code. So the, to comment out code in Lua, we use two hyphens. And by writing two hyphens in front of some code, it tells the computer that it doesn't need to read it. So the computer isn't going to read any of this. The print won't execute because it's got comment in front of it. And you can see it's grayed out by Roblox to show that it's been commented out. So first we're going to learn how to create variables. So to create a variable, the keyword to use is local. So a variable is just saving some kind of data into a piece of memory inside the computer so that we can use it at a later date. So we can call it whatever we want. Let's call it number. And that means we'll be able to access number later by just typing in number. So what should we make number? Let's make it 5000. So we've stored the number 5000 inside a variable called number. So you'll see now that if I print out number, instead of printing out, well, if you didn't have a variable, this would just error. But if you print out number, you see it's going to print out 5000. So we've stored a number within a variable and we've printed it out. So you can do math with different variables. So if we make two, we call it number and number two. And then we print the number plus number two, it will print out whatever the result of this is, so 7,000. So when I run the game, I don't want to run it with a player because it's quicker. It's printed out 7,000 rather than 5,000 and 2,000 and whatever. We've, we've added these two numbers together and we've printed them out. So the next thing we're going to learn is how to loop. So say you wanted to print the numbers 1 to 10. You could do it just by tediously printing out 1, 2, 3, like this. But that's going to take you ages, especially if you want to go up to like 10 million. Um, <laughs> uh, and if you want to suddenly you decide to print it from 10 to 1 instead, it's going to take you forever to switch around all the print statements. It's going to be a hassle. So the easiest way to do it is by using loops. So there's two types of loops, a while true loop and a for loop. A for loop will just go through a certain amount of times or it will loop through everything inside a table. And a while loop will keep going until a certain expression is met. So, in general practice, a while loop should be used if you don't know how long you're looping for, and a for loop should be used if you know how long you want to loop through for. So if we're going from 1 to 10, we know we want to loop through 10 times, so we should use a for loop. So to make a loop inside Roblox, the keyword is for, then we use a variable, I use i, and then equals, and then we write the number the loop's going to start at, so 1, and after that we use comma and write the number that it's going to end at, so 10. There is another number you can write after this, so if I wrote 0 0.5, then the loop will instead go up in 0 0.5, so it will go 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2 2.5, like that. But if you don't write anything, it will just go up in 1s, it defaults to 1. So you write do, and here you've got a for loop, for i is 1 to 10, do. And now, instead of printing out all those long lines, we can just print out i, the script's going to loop 10 times, and in each loop, i is going to be equal to 1 or 2 or 3, and then it's going to print out that number. So when we run the game, you can see it's printed out 1 to 10. Another loop is the while loop. So if I make a new variable called num and I set it to 1, then I can say while num is smaller than 5, num is equal to num plus 1, and then print out num. So it's going to start off with the number 1, and it's going to say, is the number less than 5? Yes, it is. So let's add 1. We'll print it out. Is the number less than 5? Yes. Add 1. Print it out. It's going to go 2, 3, 4, 5. And then once number's 5, it's going to stop the loop because it's not smaller than 5 anymore. And there you go. It's printed out 2 to 5. So those are the two loops that you can do inside Lua, the while loop and the for loop. The next thing I want to teach you about is tables. So tables, uh, it's like a list. They hold all different values inside them and then you can loop through them or you can access certain ones. So uh, it's like having a list in real life, like a shopping list. Uh, you create a variable, shopping list, 
and to create a list you use two curly brackets an open and a closed curly bracket and that's created a list in here so if I put anything in here so say if I put in apples and pears and then I put some numbers I've got a list of all these things so this is useful because then I can loop through the list so to loop through a list you can use another for statement and when you're going through a list there's going to be two arguments which will change so instead of up here I was just changing to these numbers we'll have two variables one will show you the position of whatever you're looping through so here it will say one then two then three and the second one will be the value so it will say apples pears five like that kind of thing so if we put for position comma value in next shopping list so this piece of code is going to loop through the shopping list and every time it loops through it's going to update its position to the next one and it's going to update its value to the value inside the list so here if I just print out the position and then I print out the value then it should go one apples two pairs three five four six that kind of thing so you can see it's printed out it's a bit awkward to see with the numbers, but it's printed out all of the different things inside that list and their positions. And there's loads of pre-built functions inside Roblox uh, that will automatically get lists. So in any object inside here, you can use get children, and you can use get descendants. So inside the hierarchy of the Explorer, each thing in here has can have children and it has a parent so this script its parent is the server script service and server script service has one child which is the script so if I write in workspace get children that will give me a list of all the things inside workspace so now I can loop through all the things inside the workspace so I get a list of everything in the workspace and here I'm looping through this uh, this underscore just means I don't really care what the position is, so I could print out the position, but I don't really want to, so I just put an underscore since I don't need it. Uh, it's going to return the object, and then I can print out its name. So if I run this, it should print out camera, terrain, pine tree, base plate. So it's looped through workspace, and it's gotten all the objects inside, and it's printed out their names. To index values inside lists, so to get specific values, you can easily do it by using the open and close square brackets. So if I wanted to get apples, then I could do print shopping list one, and that's gonna to go to the first position in the shopping list apples, and that would print out apples. So that's it. Those are some really simple programming concepts. Um, this is a super beginner's tutorial. So for a challenge this week, try to create a script that has a list your program will loop through everything in that list, all the numbers inside the list. It will add them all together and then it will print it out at the end. Anyway, that's it for today's video. This was just some simple Lua concepts. We're going to be getting on to some more advanced things soon, some more advanced coding, some more advanced scripting inside Roblox. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, like the video, subscribe so you can see the next videos and keep up with the episodes as we go along. And I'll see you guys next time.